Ubuntu has announced that they will be replacing the GNU core utilities, the core of almost every Linux-ish system out there. I mean, we're talking LS, Kill, Chamad, Joan, Date, uh, just a huge number of utilities that comprise the core of our Linux systems. They're going to replace them with entire rewrites in Rust. Just drop in replacements, rewritten entirely in Rust. The 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 old adage of <clears throat> what you're referring to as Linux is in fact GNU forward slash Linux, or as I've recently taken to calling it GNU plus Linux, is about to change to what you're referring to as Linux is in fact Rust slash Linux, or as I've taken to calling it Rust plus Linux. Uh, this was announced by a one John Seeger, who is the vice president of engineering for Ubuntu, the, the top dog. I mean, as far as Ubuntu engineering goes, this is the guy. He works at Canonical. He's the vice president in charge of everything about Ubuntu. So what he says kind of goes. I'm going to read his uh, <coughs> part of his announcement here, and then I've got a few other things to say. Last month, I published Engineering Ubuntu for the Next 20 Years, which outlines four key themes for how I intend to evolve Ubuntu in the coming years. In this post, I'll focus on modernization. There are many areas we could look to modernize in Ubuntu. We could focus on the graphical shell experience, the virtualization stack, core system utilities, default shell utilities, etc. Over the years, projects like GNU Core Utils have been instrumental in shaping the Unix-like experience that Ubuntu and other Linux distributions ship to millions of users. According to the GNU website, quote, the GNU Core Utils are the basic file, shell, and text manipulation utilities of the GNU operating system. These are the core utilities which are expected to exist on every system. Uh, and John goes on to say, this package provides utilities which have become synonymous with Linux to many, the likes of LS, CP, and MV. I mean, it's, it's everything. If you're in a terminal, you're using these. In recent years, there has been an effort to re-implement this suite of tools in Rust. And not a joke. They just doing it. Though, though, the, the common joke, of course, is if you see a piece of software, people in Rust are going to want to rewrite it in Rust because it's a religion. Uh, in recent years, there's been an effort to rewrite it in Rust with the goal of reaching 100% compatibility with the existing tools. Okay, well, that's a good goal. Similar projects like sudo rs, like re, which is re-implementing the sudo tool in Rust, aim to replace key security critical utilities with more modern memory safe alternatives. Oh, because you can't have you can't have secure software if it's not written in Rust. Uh, starting, he continues, starting with Ubuntu 25.10, which comes out uh, in this coming October, so half a year away. My goal is to adopt some of these modern implementations as the default. My immediate goal is to make you utils the core utils implementation in Rust, the default in Ubuntu 25.10, and subsequently in our next long-term support release, which is 2604 next April, so a year from now. Uh, that's that's what's what's going on. Now, UUtils is from the UUtils website, uh, the re is a re-implementation of the ubiquitous command line utilities in Rust. Our goal is to modernize the utils while re retaining full compatibility with the existing utilities. We are planning to replace all essential Linux tools. <laughs> Holy heavens. Now, uh, to, to their to their credit, uh, to the, the developers of UUtils, the Rust <clears throat> developers who have been working on this, they have been doing a good job of tracking how well their completely rewritten in Rust versions of the core utils are doing. Now, now core utils, GNU core utils, as this should be noted, has a long running, I mean, decades and decades old test suite. So just huge numbers, hundreds of tests to make sure that these core utilities to running your system do not break things, right? They have to consistently work between versions so that they don't backpedal. They don't have regressions. They don't, they don't cause significant breakages across the systems. And you'll notice as these, 
these core utils get updated over the years, it's very rare that you hit upon a massive system breakages issue. There have been a couple of issues over the years, mostly many, many, many years past, where core utils breakages have caused problems throughout Linux systems, and so they've worked really hard to make sure that doesn't happen with these massive test suites. Uh, if you're watching the video version, I've got uh, some a little snapshot of some of their test suites up on the screen for U utils. Now, what they're doing here is they're running the GNU core utils test suite suite against the rewritten in Rust version of those core utils. And the red bars are failures. Now you'll notice, well, a significant portion of them are more or less passing the test suite, but almost every single utility is failing the test suite in some way. Some of them uh, completely, <laughs> I mean, even, even date, Date is failing four out of five core tests here. It's the date function, right? Um, you look, you go down the line, uh, LS, LS is failing three of the core tests here. There's an awful lot of red. Now the, the team behind the Rust rewritten core utils has done a pretty good job of getting rid of those failures over the last like two, three or so years. And they've even got a chart up on their website at their GitHub where they show the failures continuing to go down and the pass rate continuing to go up. But an important thing to remember is there are still a hundred ish massive critical failures in their rewritten Rust core utilities. It is simply not ready as a drop-in replacement, uh, but Ubuntu is gonna push ahead with it anyway and, uh, and drop as much of it into Ubuntu Linux as possible uh, to replace the GNU tools. Another critical point on this is there seems to be a bit of confusion as to the licensing here. The Rust-based UUtils is not GPL licensed. Now, so in some places, it lists it as GPL licensed, but if you go to the actual source code and you look at the license file in Core Utils, it is an MIT license. That's fine. I, I don't mind the MIT license. I've got no issue with the MIT license. But what that does mean is this is a fundamental change, not just in um, who is developing the utilities that underpin everything. I mean, outside of the kernel, I can think of no more critical component of a Linux system than these core utilities. In fact, I would make the argument that these core utilities represent a more fundamental part of the Linux experience than the kernel itself. It, they are absolutely vital. You take out these core utils from GNU, you don't have a Linux system right now. You just don't. So uh, this is a, a very, very big change functionally. But in addition to that, the fact that we're changing the, the fundamental license from a GPL license to an MIT license, well, that's yet another massive conceptual and licensing change. And Ubuntu is, is pushing forward on this, which means that the Ubuntu derivatives... Uh, the the Linux mints and whatnot of the world, and there's a lot of Ubuntu derivatives, are going to eventually follow suit. And by eventually, I mean within the next year-ish. This is a pretty, this is a dramatic, radical change to the entirety of the Linux ecosystem. Um, it should also be noted that there has been efforts over the last, you know, several years to implement portions of the Linux kernel in the Rust programming language. <clears throat> this has been going on for a while now. The Rust Linux project has seen a lot of problems, <laughs> a lot of problems. And the core of it really is that Rust is not a stable language. And for those of you, before you get mad at me, I don't mean stable as in like it crashes all the time. I mean, stable as in it's changing. It's evolving. It's not a consistent, single, easily targetable language at this point. And the Rust compiler itself is undergoing radical changes, often breaking changes on an extremely regular basis. And so uh, Linus Torvalds has even come out and said flat out, uh, the Rust compiler is simply not stable enough for Linux kernel development at this point. This was stated last September 
quote, nothing depends on Rust in the Linux kernel now, and nothing will for some time yet, end quote. And the real core of that is that there's, there's not a stable compiler at this point. It, it's, it's not ready for those core system level things for a project of this size. So, so this is, there's just so many questions that this raises. Why would Ubuntu take something as battle tested as the GNU core utilities? I mean, I, I can think of very few pieces of software that have been under as rigorous a use as the GNU core utilities. I mean, they've been in use for years and they are the core of the system and they're relied upon by innumerable thousands of other applications that tie directly into them. Even the slightest change to the way that they function will cause a cascade of breaking failures throughout systems. It is very critical that any re-implementation of them must be perfect. I mean perfect. So why, if it's so battle tested, why get rid of it? Why throw the baby out with the bathwater and say, oh, you know what? We're just going to drop in a Rust re-implementation. And honestly, this feels like a religious decision to me. It just does. I don't see... I don't see any clear direct benefit. And I read through everything that the VP at Ubuntu stated around this. Uh, every concern about, oh, well, if we re-implement it in Rust, it'll be faster and more memory safe. Well, not demonstrably, no. It, theoretically, I suppose. But you're not trying to fix a stated, a real obvious glaring problem in GNU core utils. You're trying to fix a theoretical, hypothetical thing that doesn't actually exist. Right. There's no there's no actual big issues with the GNU core utilities. And so you're replacing it because of issues that don't exist with a Rust based alternative that demonstrably has huge numbers of failures and that will create massive breakages. That's a huge deal. So I think that this is a religious thing. I can't think of no other reason behind this. Uh, and this sort of thing has been going on quite a lot. You'll notice there there have been a lot of uh, bits of tumultuousness happening within the Linux kernel development community over the last several months. Uh, back in February, I reported how um, some leftist extremists left the Linux kernel and demanded that conservatives be banned from the Linux kernel. And many of you are like, well, what does this have to do with Rust? Well, many of those same extremists who were trying to get people banned from the Linux kernel and were leaving the Linux kernel in protest were also pushing very hard to replace significant portions of the Linux kernel in Rust. There's a direct overlap between those groups. This The same activists that have been trying to get people kicked out of Linux and people have been leaving in protest and throwing little hissy fits are the same people who are trying to get Linux rewritten in Rust. It's the same overlapping group. I mean, if you draw a Venn diagram, it's not a perfect circle, but it's it's almost a circle. It's a circle with a little boop <laughs> in it, right? It's, it's almost totally overlapping. And so what, what seems to be happening here, and we see, we see people yelling about it and creating issues around it and, 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 and creating like write-in harassment campaigns about, about uh, implementing portions of the Linux kernel in Rust and how we have to adopt Rust. And if we don't adopt Rust, we're all going to die. It's intense. And it doesn't seem to be focused this effort to move everything to Rust in the kernel, in the core utils, doesn't seem to be focused on pointing to a problem that we have, right? No one's pointing to and saying, saying, okay, this core util, like, like for example, let, let's, let's look for example, LS. How many of you use LS in your Linux kernel? Be, or in your, in your Linux shell, right? To, to get a list of, of, of the files in your directories, right? LS, you type it all the time. Is it broken? Now, now, remember, a huge number of tools sit on top of LS and call into LS to, to pull output and, and use in other tools. So if you change LS, it's going to break a bunch of stuff. It just is. <laughs> And, and shoot, uh, there is there are currently three failures, according to this. And that's one of the better working utilities in UUtils, the Rust rewritten core utils. 
One of the better working ones is LS, which I would assume because it's one of the most commonly used. But it still has huge numbers of failures. I mean, for what it is, because any failure on this is going to be a massive issue. So what exactly problem are we pointing to that we need to fix? And then we come along and say we're going to fix these, these non-existent problems by introducing hundreds of failures? <laughs> Why? <laughs> I don't understand. It doesn't make logical sense. It's not an engineering solution, right? It's being proposed by a VP of engineering, but I'm going to go out and flat out say it's being proposed from the VP of engineering from a religious point of view. This is religion. This is the rust religion and it doesn't make any sense at all. If he's coming at it from an engineering point of view, he would be focused on solving actual problems that need to get solved. But instead he's thinking, well, what if there were a problem? Well, we'd, we could just re-implement everything in rust. What? No, no, that's not, that's not how this works. <laughs> Well, what, what if your arm was, uh, uh, had a, had a cut on it? What if you did have a cut on your arm? You don't have a cut on your arm, but what if you did? Well, you'd have to amputate that arm and build a brand new arm. What? <laughs> well, that doesn't make any sense at all. <laughs> and that's what we're talking about doing here. It, it's nonsense. It's, it's all utter nonsense and it's pushing Linux in a direction that just makes no, no sense at all. And now I, I have things I really like about GNU, including the GPL, the GNU project, all of it, things I really love and like. And I have things that I am critical of and I've been critical of for years. There's pluses and minuses there, but this is without question a dramatic and fundamental change away from the GNU slash Linux system that we currently have towards a Rust slash Linux system. That's what we're going towards is Rust slash Linux. We're changing the license from GPL to MIT across the core utilities, right? We're, go we're going from a, a, a GNU system to a Rust system. We're replacing things that were battle tested that we knew worked great with things that we know demonstrably are still broken. But we declare that we're doing it because everything's safer now. It's memory safe. It's nonsense. It's utter hogwash and nonsense. Uh, and I'm going to keep watching what they do. I I hope that the Ubuntu and Canonical crew and, and everyone else pushing this comes to their senses and and regains their, their engineering mindset and says maybe instead of doing this nonsense that is going to break a lot of stuff and just make people angry because now their stuff is broken and the software licenses are changed and their systems don't work as well. And they'll focus instead on building something new and interesting. I would hope that happens. I'm not confident, though. Uh, thank you to the Lunduke Journal subscribers. Go to lunduke.com for all of the amazing links. It's the best, best website. The only thing that the lunduke.com website is missing is a couple of GeoCities-style animated GIFs, like a, a, a looks best in Netscape and maybe a little under construction guy at the bottom. But if but, <laughs> I should probably add those. But other than that, it is the world's perfect website, lunduke.com. You can see all the different places that you can enjoy the Lunduke Journal. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, nerds and nerdettes across this wide inner tube of ours, I do declare and broadcast. <laughs>